Hey, what's up? This is Emerson, and I make Minecraft videos. Today I'm going to be showing you piston programming. Now, piston programming is basically memory, like uh, RAM and ROM, like, you know, in computers and stuff. And we can use this in Minecraft in a lot of different ways and for a lot of different things. And um, so, basically, some examples of piston programming are uh, like decoders, combination locks, displays and other things and um, so first I'm going to show you RAM um, kinda like RAM random access memory it's it's kinda like that but usually with RAM you can read and write to it but in this simple version all you can do is read from it and you'll get what I'm saying what I'm saying in a bit so this is an example of RAM kind of is when uh, we trigger, when we get a signal, we get an output that we uh, program. So, if we go in 1, we get 1. If we go in 2, we get 2 and 3. Um, it's pretty simple, and we can use this right over here for this guy. And you can see it just goes through. And, uh,. So it, it's pretty simple to build. Um, basically, we go off the concept that when a block is on top of a uh, of a hole here, it'll split the redstone. So you will see this. So if I put a block right here, it splits it up. You see that? And so we can use a piston to split it or not split it if we need to. And um, so let's build one of these things. Alright, so now we do the same thing, another one for another byte. And you can continue this as long as you want. Um, just remember that every uh, 15 pieces of redstone you need a repeater, so you will probably have to extend out an extra space. And um, because when you go down here, like after you get 15, then you'll do two like that. So one redstone and then a repeater and then redstone, and it'll still work just fine. Um, all right. So what you do is you place a redstone torch at the opposite end, like so. So now, what you do is you have the output from these torches and we can get sticky pistons alright now after you do that just put blocks only on the tops of ones that you want to be on the um, off position um, so zeros so we'll do something simple and then we'll just hook up the output to these pistons. We can put this output up to um, a display or a decoder. Or not, we can't put it up to a decoder, but whatever you can find a use of it for. And um, we're going to make the one that would be used for a display. So what you have to do is we're just going to put the button Now once we get to the end here, what we need to do is we need to loop around to this other side, right? Well, what we need to do is we need to have the same delay as before to get it to work properly. So a default button tick or click or whatever is 9 ticks or 9 milliseconds. Um, so here we have that. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and boom, boom, and we all just go back all the way across, and there we go. So now that we have that, all we have to do is click the button, and then what we can do, if is if you want to, is hook up.
a uh, a signal shortener, which is very simple to build. That should work. But I don't think the signal has enough. Yep, yeah, that's right. So basically what I did is put this on three ticks and that on one tick because um, this makes one plus three is four. Oh, well, that probably wasn't the best idea. Yeah, it's kind of glitchy. That's not going to work. So let's put that on four. Put that right there. I think that's just a graphical glitch, but pretty much this is the RAM. Um, I might put this in multiple parts um, just because of the length of the video. Um, and if I do that, this is part one.